Hi guys, so today I'm going to be filming a video on my favorite designer, more affordable fragrances for women. Now this year I made it my mission to try to discover some more designer fragrances, start to actually wear them myself and that was not a... Um, I was not consciously just wearing niche fragrances because I was a snob or I was a niche snob. It was just because I owned more niche fragrances than I did designer. But to a lot of people's surprise, a lot of the time these days I'm wearing designer fragrances. Like during my day-to-day -day life, I mostly wear designer fragrances, which is maybe going to come to a surprise to some people. But I really wanted to film this because I know you guys request it quite a lot for me to do more designer, affordable... I know you guys request it a lot from me to make some more like designer videos and stuff. So that's what I'm doing today. And I really hope that you guys enjoy this little list I put together of some of my favorites, some fragrances that I'm wearing a lot at the moment and just some that I wanted to talk with you guys about. And I'm excited because this video is in collaboration with Fragrance Net. Now I have been using this website, honestly, since I lived in Australia, like Maybe when I was about 16, I remember making an order on fragrance nets and I ordered maybe about like 10 perfumes or something. And ever since then, now and again, I order from there. Obviously, as you guys know, nowadays, since I'm making like fragrance videos and fragrance is kind of like my job, I guess you could say, which is quite cool. I receive a lot of fragrances for free. So I feel like personally, I buy them less. But when I was buying them more frequently, fragrance net is a fantastic online retailer that has 100% authentic products. I cannot stress that enough to you guys. You really have to be careful when you're buying online. And that's what I really appreciated about FragranceNet is that every single time I got a product from them, it was 100% authentic. I checked the bottom, I checked the box. Everything is authentic, fresh. They have a full warehouse in the US and it is just a really, really great online retailer. If you guys wanted to go through the online purchasing route, I would definitely recommend Fragrance Net because again, their products are 100% authentic and also just on top of that as a cherry on top, they always have a lot of discounts on their products. Uh, the most wanted, the most famous, the most popular at the moment, they always have some sort of discount going on, which is fantastic. So just wanted to let you guys know about that. If you didn't know about Fragrance Net already, which I'm sure most of you guys do, they're fantastic. I'll have all of the products. They will be linking to Fragrance Net for you guys. If you guys watch my channel, you know that I've collaborated with Fragrance Net a few times in the past and I've always really enjoyed our collaboration. So very happy to be doing it once again. Let's get into this video, enough rambling, let's go. Gotta mention it again, it is Yes I Am by Casherelle. Now, what can I say? I saw quite a few of you guys go and purchase this fragrance from my video. And I am so happy and I really, really hope that you guys appreciate it and love this fragrance as much as me. Because for me, it is just so good. It is the perfect balance of like this slightly spicy, slightly lactonic, slightly gourmand fragrance. There is a bit of a fruitiness in there. There is a little bit of like raspberry, caramel, vanilla. There is some licorice, some cinnamon. It has this like kind of slight spiciness to it. A very nice lactonic note. It's quite milky, quite creamy, very intoxicating, very sexy. It's affordable. It's fantastic. The longevity is really good. I'm not going to lie to you guys and tell you it's 15 hours plus with massive projection. It's not. It lasts around like six to eight hours with average projection. So absolutely love it. I love the way it smells. Exactly what I like. A slightly creamy, milky gourmand with some sweetness, obviously, and a little bit of a spicy kick in there. We're gonna come all the way full circle right now and I'm gonna recommend you an absolute favorite of mine currently. And I discovered my love for this fragrance over the past year or so maybe. It is Angel from Thierry Mugler or Mugler as we now know. Thierry Mugler, rest in peace. I adore this brand. I think it is one of the most creative designers by far. I love the fashion. One day I hope to be able to afford some of his pieces. And I just think it is in terms of creation wise with their fragrances. Mugler really, really led the way in a lot of unique, interesting, they pushed the boundaries and they really, I don't know, just captivated the designer world for me. So 
Angel from Mugler. Let's see how it smells. Of course, I already know. This is so, so fantastic. And it really, really took me a long time to get acquired with the fragrance. But I feel like, I don't know if you guys agree with me right now. Nobody wears this anymore. I've, n I don't remember the last time I smelled somebody wearing Angel. <laughs> A beautiful, sexy, intoxicating, spicy, patchouli, gourmand. There is a dark chocolate note. There is literally a note breakdown like this in Angel. But overall, you get this kind of like slightly dirty patchouli. It does have like a freshness to it in a way. There is caramel, tonka bean, cotton candy, coconut. There is so many notes. But overall for me, I get this beautiful beautiful gourmand patchouli scent but it has like I said that kind of lift to it it's not too heavy or too thick or it's not a very dark woody um weighted patchouli fragrance it's quite light and uplifted it does smell a little dirty which is what I love about the fragrance and overall I just think it is just magnificent when I was younger I could not appreciate the fragrance for what it was but now when I smell it, I love to wear it. I love to smell it on others. And I really think it is probably one of the top 10 best perfumes ever created in the whole entire world. Angel from Terry Mugler. All of the flankers as well. There is a lot of the flankers that I really love. But I wanted to go ahead and recommend the original since I have it. I love it. I bought it with my own money. And I just think it is a fantastic fragrance to have in your collection. And one that I told you guys I've been wearing for maybe the past year or so, like we took it to Cannes with us last year, we both wore it and I really, really love Angel. So just wanted to give it a little shout out, Angel. I'm still an alien girl. You guys know if you stuck around on my channel, I am still an alien girl. I wore alien for a lot of my life, but Angel has become like, she's worked her way into my heart, if you know what I'm saying. Next one, I think it may shock you as well. But I tried this fragrance a few months ago. I have two samples of it and I have worn through those two samples and I really need to get a bottle of it. And it is Yves Saint Laurent Libre Intense. Now this fragrance really, really blew me away. And I remember when the original Libre came out, Libre, if you want to say it like a French person, Libre, but I'm going to say Libre. When the original came out, I really thought it was quite boring. I remember I was in Perth. I went to our local department store. I smelled it. I was so excited. I love the bottle. I love the name. And I smelled it and I was like, it's boring. But when I revisited the fragrance, I think I just kind of said that to be harsh. When I revisited the way that it smells, I actually really, really do like the fragrance a lot. I would never say that it's my favorite fragrance in the world, that it's the best fragrance ever, but I gave it a hard time and now I regret saying that because I do think when I compare it to other designers that launched their kind of fragrance of the year or their, their new release, when I compare it to Libre, I think it's much, much, much more interesting and different than all the other designers have released in the past like two, three years. So with that being said, Libra Intense is fantastic. It's a more intense and as you can imagine, rich, uh, sweeter, darker version of the original. The original is more fresh, uplifting, more aromatic, more light and airy. The intense version, it's a bit more sexy, it's a bit more mysterious. You have more floral notes in there. You have a bit more of a sweetness. There is vanilla, there is tonka bean. The lavender is beautiful in the opening. It smells very aromatic and almost it can smell a bit unisex, this fragrance, which is what I really, really love about it. It doesn't smell overly feminine or girly. It smells very interesting, very mysterious, very sexy and very appealing, yet with still a unique touch. So it has the lavender, vanilla, tonka bean, the floral notes, the orange blossom, but it's done in such a beautiful way, this composition. And I 10 out of 10 recommend this one. I want to have it in my collection. And I know why there is a lot of hype around it because I also think it is fantastic. Libra Intense. Next up is one that I have spoken about before, but I want to reiterate my love for this specific fragrance and also this specific brand. It is Bottega Veneta by Bottega Veneta. It is a fantastic, classic, cheap fragrance and it really does it well. Like, that's what I want to say. The quality, the juice, the creation, everything about the House of Bottega Veneta. I mean, a lot of people love it for fashion. Me, I 
really love their fragrances actually i think they're really well done they're really high quality they're very reasonably priced as well and i think you get your money's worth with this brand and it's very creative so that's what i really love about the brand and i feel like it doesn't get much recognition in terms of their fragrance beauty side whereas i think it should so this fragrance for me it's just the original like signature bottega veneta it is like i said a beautiful ship and it reminds me of the similar dna of Gris Dior by christian dior you have this very nice oak moss note there is some patchouli there is some pink pepper there is a bit of leather as you know i'm not a fan of leather but in this fragrance it smells beautiful and it kind of just adds to this beautiful ship uh composition and i just think it's fantastic a very beautiful timeless fragrance that doesn't smell old yet it doesn't smell super new and modern it's kind of like sitting in the middle as like a timeless classic and i think it's perfect for work for running errands for doing your day-to-day -day life it could be a perfect signature fragrance and that's why i wanted to recommend it i also love and i'm gonna grab it right now where is it so guys i also love this fragrance right here look how much i used of this guys bottega veneta Il look it's like almost gone bottega veneta illusion for her but i didn't want to include it because as much as I absolutely freaking adore this smell, like I want this smell to be like my life, it lasts 30 seconds and then it's gone. So what is the point of spending money if the fragrance, honestly, it's one of the poorest uh, fragrances in terms of longevity that I have ever experienced. So that's why I didn't want to put it and I wanted to put the Bottega Veneta itself. That's like my out of the shower, it's going to last 30 seconds and I can reapply something else after. Really, it's not worth it. <laughs> An oldie but a goodie that is so close to my heart, you guys know, if you know, you know, it is Oud Bouquet. And yes, I have the old bottle, but the new bottles, it's the same formulation, kind of. I would say the older formulations, it's just a little more... I don't even want to say rich it's a bit more dense i guess you could say but the new formulation still smells very much the same and it is fantastic because i've tried it and when i run out of this i will get a new bottle huh a bisou as you guys know oud bouquet is a huge og of mine it's been on my channel for several years and every single year at least I revisit this fragrance. Either I go through like a few weeks period where I'm obsessed with it or I just revisit it once or twice or a few times but every single year I at least have to revisit this fragrance and wear it for like a night out or something that I'm doing because at the end of the day when I go back to smelling this fragrance after I've smelled hundreds and maybe even thousands of fragrances, thousands, I still smell this and I really still think it is my favorite sweet rose oud combination and truly a fragrance that I could not live without if I really think about it. I have a lot of memories attached to it and I still absolutely adore the way that it smells. Oud Bouquet is still one of the best. When it comes to that sweet rose oud, this is it. I feel like it's even gotten better as time has gone on. I think the juice has like macerated even more. The vanilla has gotten sweeter. The praline has interacted with the vanilla. The oud has gotten a little more smoky and dark. It's just, it's a beauty that I hope I will have in my collection forever. Oh, wow, I use quite a lot of this one. Guys, my juice, it's up to, I think you can see. It's up to like here. Wow, that's a lot for Oud Bouquet. As you guys know, it's like a vanilla rose with some Oud, some praline. It's a little dark, a bit slightly incensey, but not so much. The Oud is not animalic. It's not over the top. It's just this very delicious, sexy, rose, sweet, gourmand, sticky, slightly Oud fragrance. And it is just a 12 out of 10 that I will always have in my collection if you don't have it already. Why? <laughs> because for me, it's always been an OG and I've always spoken about it for so many years now on my channel. And if you don't have it, you definitely should get it. So Oud Bouquet from Lancome. And I love to wear it for nights out and it lasts probably 24 hours on your skin. That is no joke. When I say that, I mean it. Like 24 hours is still sticking onto your skin. Okay guys, so next up we have an iconic fragrance that I just have to mention because it will always be a favorite of mine. It is Tom Ford Black Orchid. I cannot remember the last time that I smelled Black Orchid on a person. That's a lie, actually I remember. 
It was in Paris maybe a year ago or so, give or take. And it was one of Pierre's friends, a guy, and he was wearing Black Orchid and he immediately, like super fashion guy, like very, very, very fashion, you know, like little hat, little earring, like his outfits, he was very swag. And he came up, he gave me two keys and I was like, are you wearing Black Orchid? And he's like, yeah, I am actually. <laughs> I was like, nice, because Black Orchid, I feel like I never smell it these days. I never smell this DNA, this, this signature scent that is just magnificent, Black Orchid. Dark, sexy, floral, mysterious, very pungent. It has this very earthy, pungent uh, patchouli mixed with like this very earthy woodiness. It has a sweetness mixed with this very weird, indolic, mysterious floral scent. It is just really one of the most unique, special creations that I've ever tried in my life. Black Orchid is a masterpiece, it forever will be. Just like Angel is, just like uh, Black Orchid, just like Baccarat Rouge, Chanel Number no. 5. These are all kind of like icons in the fragrance industry. And for me, you just cannot go wrong with it. If I smell somebody wearing Tom Ford Black Orchid, I immediately appreciate this person because they have great taste in perfume. Black Orchid, it's a love or hate. You either love it or you really hate it. It just really depends on who you are and your nose and what you like. Um, but for me, it's always going to be a favorite and it's always going to be a fragrance that I recommend. And that's why I wanted to put this in this video because I wish that I smelled it more often. I really miss the way that it smells and I really miss smelling it on people and I think it's one of the best. I really, I was actually planning to upload a video, it's like that girl perfumes and I put Black Orchid in that list because I really think it is that girl, that girl that's on the go, living her dreams, doing her thing, super boss lady type of fragrance, I think Black Orchid is it. Next up, we have a new baby, a new favorite, a new love, a new obsession. It is Narciso Rodriguez Eau de Parfum Ombre. Now, this fragrance is exactly what I love. And again, you guys know me. And if you go and smell this fragrance, tell me it doesn't remind you of me because this is what I love in a perfume. And oh, it just blew all in my dog's face. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Nothing else to say, but freaking yes. <sighs> Narciso Rodriguez Eau de Parfum Ombre is a beautiful tropical floral, a musky, sexy, tropical floral through and through. I want to wear this drunk dancing at like a super sexy, not even a nightclub, just like a soiree on the beach on a tropical vacation. <clears throat> drinking cocktails, drinking pina coladas, with my hair down, sweaty. That's very descriptive. I still want to do that. And I want to be wearing this fragrance right here. I want to wear this in Bali. I want to wear this with hot, humid skin where I'm sweating. I'm at night dancing around, looking really hot. I want to wear this fragrance right here. This fragrance to me is very musky. It has that very sexy musk that Narciso Rodriguez is very well known for. And then along with that, you have a beautiful French panty nodes. You have Ylang Ylang. So it has this kind of tropical yellow floral vibe, a little bit of this like coconutty touch to it. A little bit of a sweetness from like some vanilla. It is just so beautiful, very musky, slightly powdery, yellow floral, tropical, sexy, paradise heaven in a bottle. The only thing that I do have to say, and I hate to say it because when I discovered the fragrance, I fell in love with it so hard, but I wore it and I noticed that the longevity is not the best. And I feel like this is a running occurrence with these kind of tropical florals. Not all of them last very long and I'm not really sure why. Like I have quite a few fragrances that smell similar in the same universe as this and I feel like they don't really last and I'm not really even sure why because it's a floral, it has like some ambery notes in there, but I just feel like this DNA, it has a hard time lasting on the skin for some reason. I love it too much. It's a tropical floral that I want to wear on vacation. That's what it is. I'm going to share with you guys my favorite, current favorite designer line of fragrances. I love the original. I love the two flankers. I think there is only two flankers, I think. And anyways, I love all three. So I have to mention it to you guys right now. Lanta Di by Givenchy. <laughs> guys, I'm obsessed. I am obsessed. And I will tell you how this obsession started just really quickly because this video has already been so long. 
one of my friends, a good friend of mine, she was wearing it when we met several months ago. Um, and I remember meeting her and I was like, whoa, <laughs> what is that perfume? You smell incredible. <laughs> she was telling me it was L'Antadie. And I was like, okay, okay. And throughout the night we were drinking, we were talking and stuff. And just everywhere she moved, I could smell Lantadi, and it was intoxicating. Like she literally made me drool over her because of the way that she smelled. And she was just wearing the original Lantadi, the original, the original, the original. <laughs> so I went out and I bought it actually because of her. And I have worn it quite a bit, but I realized that I prefer the two flankers a little more. But I have worn Lantadi, just the original, quite a lot, and I absolutely love it. It is. Probably my favorite line from a designer that I've tried in a very long time. And not because of smelling refined or smelling super classy, not at all. I just think it smells really, really intoxicating. Really intoxicating. The Lanta D line is wow. My next purchase is the Lanta D, uh, I think it's Intense, the, in the black bottle. There is just something about it. I think it's the beautiful, sexy pear note mixed with the orange blossom, like a vanilla-ish vibe, maybe some patchouli. But I think it's this pear note, it really comes forward and it almost smells a little bit bubblegummy in a way. The mix of like pear, vanilla, orange blossom, it gives off a bit of a bubblegummy vibe. And I just think it's intoxicating. It's very sexy, it's very powerful. It has a huge sillage, projection longevity is fantastic. And I am just obsessed. And another one that I love, uh, it's not available on FragranceNet, but you do have the intense version, which I will purchase next, is the Rouge, which I took with me to the Maldives, which I cannot stop wearing. And I've received so many compliments wearing this one. It's my baby. Lanta D by Givenchy. Just even the original is just, wow. Incredible show-stopping fragrance. It has a huge projection, a huge sillage, and it's a very, just, I don't know how to explain it, it's sexy. It's a very sexy, flirty, intoxicating perfume and I absolutely love it, I cannot stop. So I'm very happy to have it in my collection. Okay guys, I'm gonna hit you with left field right now. I know this is very strange, but I am a girl and I like to wear Terre Hermes. Yes, I said it. I am a huge fan of Terre Hermes on a man, but I have recently started to wear it for myself and I tried this a few years ago as well, trying to wear like men's fragrances. But I really don't care, like I wear men's, women's, everything. I like to wear what I want to wear. And I'm such a fan of the way that this smells and I just wanted to include it in this list. If you have a boyfriend or a partner or a girlfriend that wears Terre Hermes, whatever, somebody in your life that wears it, try it on you. If you're a lady, if you're a woman watching this, try Terre Hermes and come back to me. I've been wearing this whenever I want to feel really powerful or strong or even not, even if I just want to feel like casual and I want to wear something woody and spicy, but still fresh, I'm reaching for Terre Hermes. It really makes me feel very refined, very classy, but still casual in a way. I don't know how to explain it. And it is just a really, really fantastic scent. So at the moment, I'm actually sharing this one with Pierre. I love the Parfum, the Eau de Toilette, the Eau Fresh is fantastic. Uh, I don't like the Vetiver and I haven't tried the new one yet, but I am overall a huge Terre d'Hermes fan. If you don't know how this smells, it's a woody fragrance. It's quite dry, woody, slightly spicy, but it still has this kind of transparent feeling to the fragrance and it's quite fresh at the same time as being woody. Just try it. Trust me and give it a try. If you don't like it, then that's it. Finish. Good for you. You tried it and no regrets. But for me, it's really a fragrance that I'm enjoying to wear. And I don't know why, but I'm just kind of going through a phase at the moment where I'm also enjoying to wear men's fragrances. So yeah, that's it. Tete Hermes from Hermes. And finally, we have a fragrance from La Ligue that for me, like guys, when I mentioned, yes, I am by Cacharelle, I feel like this is a like a hidden gem in a way. And this next fragrance is also something that I would consider a hidden gem. I remember trying it a long time ago. I didn't think much of it, but I have a sample and I revisited it and Let's just say I would love to get a bottle of this fragrance and it is La Ligue Soleil. This is a beautiful fragrance, absolutely stunning and I'm dying to have it in my collection actually. 
It is really a hidden gem. It has a fruitiness to it from some pear. There is some mandarin in the top. There is some cardamom, some milk, vanilla. It has a praline note. It has a coffee note. But overall, I would say it's a slightly fruity fragrance from the pear. And it turns into this very beautiful, slightly spiced, creamy, milky gourmand fragrance. Wow, wow, wow. It's a gourmand without being too gourmand, in my opinion. And it is just... A 10 out of 10. I need to wrap this video up because it has been 40 minutes now, so I'm gonna shut it off. But La Ligue Soleil is my last recommendation. It is a 12 out of 10 that I recommend to every single one of you watching this video. So yeah, that is it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.